Is it then for you? Is it then the the Slayer? Uh, well, the people who make Slayer, these four people. Yeah, I think so. I'm hoping. I told the last interview. I hope that uh, this is the way it is till we're done. Um, it's the way we started, and it's it's the way I think we make the most special music. <coughs> I like um, what Paul Bostaff did with us, but when you play with Dave and you hear Dave playing in Slayer, it just it just sounds right. And I, no fans know what I mean. I can't explain it, but it just sounds complete. This is for you, then. Um, maybe we can look back a little bit now. Um, can you say that the periods of Slayer, well, they are musically, they are uh, bounded to uh, the drummer, different drummers, or is it viewed differently? I'm sure for some people it is and for some people it isn't. No, but I mean for you, for you, for you. For me? I think it's just two different eras of our career. Because I think Paul contributed good ideas on the three albums he played on, well, four if you count Undisputed Attitude. Um, I think Paul's best performance was on God Hates Us All. So it was, it was kind of weird when he called me up and told me he was going to quit again. I'm like, you just did the best album of your life and you're quitting? <laughs> it just didn't make sense to me. So um, no, I think it's just two chunks of our life. And luckily, you know, we haven't had more. Because if you get too many band changes or, you know, the only other band that's done that is what, Judas Priest? They, they've never nailed down a drummer for very long. but. Uh, they've had wonderful drummers over their career and they've managed to succeed. Is it, um, do you have an explanation? Uh, well, this, this album, uh, I think it went to number five on the billboard. Um, do you have an ex explanation now for your success? Because it's been, well, more than in recent years, I think. I mean, well, sales wise, I mean. I think for one, it's Dave's first album since 1990. And you know, fans eat up that kind of stuff. Um, we just come off the Unholy Alliance in America, so there was just all kinds of hype about the band, you know. And everybody knew the album was coming, and it got delayed a month, and it got delayed a month. So that just, you know, gets people chomping at the bit to go out and buy it. And people in this genre in heavy metal music, the fans don't wait around. They the records out, they gotta go get it. I do the same thing. I gotta have it. So that that creates, you know, a buying frenzy, and that's how you achieve those numbers. And what is your what is your latest album you've bought? You know, funny thing is, the last album I bought, I think, was Master of Puppets, because I lost mine and I had to go get one. And but I think you had maybe you had the album then. What's that? Maybe you had the album in in the eighties because I think it was. Oh sure, I did. Eighty six or something. But do you still have the album? The original one? Yeah. Oh, you mean the vinyl yeah, itself? Yeah, yeah, I mean um, the vinyl. You know, it's funny. I went through my vinyl the other day, and I've got some cool shit in there. Yeah. Um, but Master of Puppets, I think I was already getting cassettes by then, so I don't think I have it on vinyl. Okay. I got Ride the Lightning picture disc on vinyl. Okay. And it's for you. Um, well, you are now stated as one of the big four of Trace Metal. Um, what does it do to you, such sort of names of name dropping? It doesn't really do anything for me, um, you know, because we've we've been doing what we do since the early '80s, and you know, the big four was around. 1990, you know, we did Clash of the Titans, and we had three of the four, you know, because Metallica didn't need anybody. They could do it, every, anything they had to do, you know. They would, they could go out and do that tour by themselves. Yeah. So um, I think it's cool nowadays to be the only one of the big four that still makes a big difference. Um, if Metallica ever decides to make a heavy record again, then they could make a difference too. But I mean, that those guys are just a train wreck, man. I never even watched that that some kind of monster, and that the DVD. Yeah. yeah, I never watched it. So I didn't want my memories of those guys to be eaten away by them fucking fighting amongst each other. You know, I still look back. I went to a Hard Rock Cafe in Tokyo last week, and they were playing a video from like, it was either Ride the Lightning or Master of Puppets. And I'm like, that's what I remember about Metallica. And I don't want to go see some kind of monster because I don't want it to take that away from me. And this is for you. Do you, do you talk to each other? I mean, do you know the? <laughs> The guys at Metallica, do you see each other often, or is it? Well, I knew, we all knew Trujillo from when he was in Suicidal Tendencies. So, I would say, out of them all, he's probably our closest friend because we knew him there, we knew him in Ozzy. Um, I see Kirk Cavan every once in a while, you know, I'd say hey, but, you know, we've never hung out or anything. Um, well, I have to stop now. Thank you. Cool, man. Okay.